Welcome back to Hover Unbox. Today, we're wrapping up 2023 by going over the current GPU market from top to bottom to give you our picks at each price point. There are a lot of GPUs to go over, but before we get into it, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by LG and their Ultra Gear 27GR95 QA OLED gaming monitor, which is currently on sale for $200 off. This display is the perfect choice for high refresh rate HDR gaming and has a blazing fast 240Hz refresh, which combined with elite response times gives you super clear motion. Plus you get a stunning HDR experience thanks to OLED's per pixel local dimming and deep zero blacks, giving you that excellent image quality we expect from true HDR. To learn more about the 27GR95 QE at $200 off, or if you're interested in the ultra-wide 45GR95 QE OLED instead at $400 off, check the links in the description below. Okay, so let's start with the most affordable options, and then we'll work our way up to the most expensive. Oh, so, the RTX 4090 then. All right, starting with the most affordable discrete GPU options. And as you'd expect, unfortunately, you won't find any current generation products here. So there's no Radeon 7000 or GeForce 40 series products to speak of. But from AMD, we do have the choice of the RX 6400, $120 for this model. We also have the 6500 XT at $140. Then there's the RX 6600 at $190, and then maybe the 6650 XT, though this one does creep past the $200 US price point at $240 US. Then from NVIDIA, there's the rather sad GTX 1630 at $135 US. I kind of forgot this product even existed. There's also the slightly more compelling GTX 1650 at $170 US. The RTX 3050, that can be had for $230. The GTX 1660 Super at $200. And then the 1650 Super, which is obviously running low on stock because for some reason that part is $250 US. So therefore you can just ignore it. When scraping the bottom of the barrel, you'll be tossing up between the RX 6400, 6500 XT and GTX 1630, all a price below $150 US. And truth be told, they're all pretty terrible options, but at current prices, the 6500 XT is by far the best of the bad bunch. Even when limited to PCI Express 3.0, it was still almost 70% faster than the GTX 1630, and yet it cost just 4% more, or an extra $5. Both pack just 4GB of VRAM, so they're pretty useless for cutting a AAA gaming, though with the lowest quality settings at 1080p, the 6500 XT will deliver over 30 FPS in most modern games. Sadly though, your options here are extremely limited, but had the 6500 XT launched $140 US rather than $200 US, it would have been far better received. Even so, I strongly encourage you to ignore the bottom of the barrel offerings as they are truly awful, and instead come up with an extra $50 US for the RX 6600. Really do whatever it takes to make sure that happens. Because although the RX 6600 is still very much a low end product by today's standards, when compared to something like a 6500 XT or GTX 1630, it's an absolute weapon, offering on average 1.7 times more performance than the 6500 XT and 3.6 times more performance than the GTX 1630. Another way of putting it, the RX 6600 is on average 78% faster than the 6500 XT, yet it costs just 36% more. Or it's 127% faster if you limit the 6500 XT to PCIe 3.0 rather than 4.0, which does highlight the biggest issue here for that budget card. Again, the 6500 XT, it does only pack 4 gigabytes of VRAM, while the RX 6600 has 8 gigabytes. For now, the RX 6600 really is the king of budget builds with no competition. The RTX 3050, that somehow cost $230 US, despite the RX 6600 offering on average around 30% more performance. The RTX 3050 is also priced alongside the $240 US RX 6650 XT, which is even faster again, offering around 20% more performance than the standard 6600 but it also costs 26% more, making the RX 6600 the best value option. If 
buying a previous generation GPU isn't your jam, but you still want to spend as little as possible, then I've got terrible news for you. As your options include the Radeon RX 7600 for $270 US or the GeForce RTX 4060 for $300. Both are 8 gigabyte graphics cards and neither are particularly impressive. In terms of performance, they're both much the same. That is to say they offer previous generation low end performance at a slightly better MSRP. When compared to the RX 6600, these newer models are around 25% faster, but they cost at least 40% more, almost 60% more in the case of the RTX 4060. Now based on our 15 game average data from our RTX 4060 review, the GeForce GPU produced an average frame rate of 91 FPS, whereas the RX 6600 managed 71 FPS, making the newer, much more expensive GeForce GPU just 28% faster. So if you care at all about getting the most bang for your buck, just buy the RX 6600 and sacrifice a little bit of performance for a massive saving. But if you are hell bent on a current generation GPU, either the RX 7600 or RTX 4060 will do, though I personally feel the GeForce GPU in this instance is worth the premium, as it is just 11% more expensive, and for that you do gain access to DLSS and frame generation, though the usefulness of both technologies is questionable on such a low-end product designed for 1080p gaming. Ideally, given the specifications, the RTX 4060 should cost $240 US, and the RX 7600 probably $220 US, though to get the recommendation over the GeForce GPU, the hypothetical $240 RTX 4060 that is, the RX 7600 would need to be even cheaper. Anyway, sadly those aren't the current prices, so let's move on. Now, stepping up the budget in a rather significant way to $400, with a cap at $550, you have the option of five current generation GPUs, or four really, as two of the options are the 4060 Ti in either the 8GB or 16GB flavors. The cheapest option here is the laughably bad 8GB RTX 4060 Ti. $400 US for an 8GB graphics card in 2023 is madness. But thankfully the 16GB version has dropped from the $500 US MSRP to a more palatable $450 US. So there's really no reason to entertain the 8GB version, if there ever was a reason. Simply get the 16GB model, or maybe consider the Radeon RX 7700 XT. Now the 7700 XT was poorly received at launch, as the MSRP was just $50 less than that of the 7800 XT, so a mere 10% saving on a product that was 16% slower and packed 25% less VRAM. So classic AMD at work there. But it would seem as though AMD jebated gamers this time, switching up the $500 US MSRP of the 7800 XT to a more margin pleasing $540 US or $550 US in most examples. Therefore, in today's market, the 7700 XT is actually 19% cheaper than the 7800 XT, which means they're now going to be pretty similar in terms of cost per frame. So with the 7700 XT appearing to be a viable option, is it worth buying for $440 US, or is the 16 GB RTX 4060 Ti for $450 US a better deal? Well, for rasterization performance, the 7700 XT is 14% faster on average, at least according to our own testing, and then ray tracing, the performance overall was fairly similar, though it does depend on the games included. We saw similar performance in titles like Fortnite, for example, though games like Cyberpunk 2077 did heavily favor the GeForce GPU. Typically speaking, though, neither GPU is really powerful enough to really take advantage of RTFX, so in my opinion, RT performance is less relevant here. Still, these are 1440p GPUs, so upscaling does play a more significant role than what we saw with, say, the RX 7600 and RTX 4060. The RTX 4060 Ti also packs more VRAM, though going from 12GB to 16GB is less significant than going from 8GB to 12GB, for example. So, picking between the 16GB RTX 4060 Ti and RX 7700 XT, it's going to be quite difficult. They're both very similar, but given that I'd personally prioritize rasterization performance at this performance tier, I'd go with the 7700 XT, 
And as an example, it did boost the 1440p performance in a game like Cyberpunk 2077 from 64 FPS to 83 FPS, and that is a noticeable difference. Still, DLSS quality is generally better at 1440p, so I could easily be swayed towards the GeForce GPU for the extra $10. Okay, so you have a lot of money to spend on a graphics card. I get it. Relax. Oh, you want to know which graphics card to buy? Why didn't you say so? Your options here include the RTX 4070 Ti or the 7900 XT, both $780 US. Or if you can stomach it, the 7900 XTX at $970 and then the RTX 4080 at $1200 US. And why are these boxes so big now? The 4070 Ti versus 7900 XT battle is pretty heavily stacked in the Radeon GPU's favour at the same price point. Based on our review data, the 7900 XT is around 8% faster on average for rasterization gaming, so a small win there, and then 7% slower on average for ray tracing. But again, the margins there can vary wildly depending on the games used for testing. In any case, generally speaking, performance overall is similar, but my main issue with the RTX 4070 Ti is paying around $800 US for a measly 12 gigabyte frame buffer. And while that appears to be enough VRAM for now, I do feel much more comfortable recommending a product at this price point with a 20 gigabyte buffer. Perhaps that's overkill, but it's also a nice peace of mind, and we've seen how much better the 16 gigabyte RX 6800 aged when compared to the 8GB RTX 3070. For example, textures going bye-bye in games like Halo Infinite on the GeForce GPU. Not exactly ideal. It's a close battle though for sure, and again I can make convincing arguments for buying one or the other, so I don't necessarily feel much more strongly about one option or the other. Then for those of you after even more performance, the 7900 XTX offers similar value to the XT version, delivering around 20% more performance for what is currently a 24% premium, though it does also pack a little extra VRAM, as unnecessary as that might be. The jump up from the RTX 4070 Ti to the 4080 is more substantial, though not just because you're getting an extra 25% performance, but more because of that 33% increase in VRAM capacity from 12 gigabytes to 16 gigabytes, which I feel is now the minimum configuration for a high-end GPU. The real difference though here can be seen when looking at the price, whereas the 7900 XTX is 24% more expensive than the XT, the RTX 4080 is 54% more expensive than the 4070 Ti, and that's a huge premium to pay, for some extra VRAM and of course, you know, a bit more performance. And that means gamers are faced with having to spend a 24% premium on the 4080 over the 7900 XTX. And that's a really hard premium to justify in my opinion. The rasterization performance of the XTX is generally slightly better, though there really isn't that much in it. The big advantage I would say is for the RTX 4080. It's just superior ray tracing performance that will help get it over the line. And this can be typically observed in titles that heavily use RTFX. And then of course, there's also DLSS, which is superior to FSR for upscaling. And then we have frame generation, though the difference is less noticeable at high resolutions. So once again, picking between the two could be quite difficult for you. Depending on your preferences though, one may be more obvious than the other. The RTX 4080, for example, that would be the obvious choice if your priority is ray tracing performance. But if you're primarily interested in rasterization performance, then the 7900 XTX certainly offers a lot more value. So there's really no clear winner here, and certainly no wrong option. Again, it'll come down to what you prioritize. The fifth and final pick really does ride itself. If you want the best of the best and you don't care about price, well, you're Nvidia's favorite sort of person. So step right up and let me introduce you to the RTX 4090. Second time I've had to pick this thing up, don't want to make a habit of it. Anyway, it sells for a cool $2,000 US right now, meant to cost $1,600 US, but Nvidia decided that that's too cheap. So $2,000 US it is. Buy enough of them and they'll be $3,200 US before you know it. Oh wait, Asus already did that. 
Seriously though, the RTX 4090 already seemed pretty ridiculous to me at $1600 US, despite how awesome the performance is. But as I often hear from viewers, us super rich YouTubers are out of touch with the common gamer. And oh boy, how true that is. Well, not the part about YouTubers being rich, the part where you all seem to have more money than me. Damn it, people, stop spending so much money on your graphics card. You're killing me out here. Anyway, the RTX 4090 has been a massive success for Nvidia, so don't expect the next generation of extreme GPUs to be any cheaper. If anything, the safe bet would be for prices to increase. So that's exciting. And that is going to do it for our final best of GPUs video of 2023. In fact, it's our first and final of the year. And I guess that speaks to just how trashed here the current generation of GPUs is. Sure, there are some bangers like the RTX 4090, but boy, oh boy, are you paying for it. And I don't mean to be too negative. All of the current generation GPUs do work well. They're just a bit lacking in terms of value, especially when compared to previous generation parts. So the excitement levels, they're a bit low. Sadly, I don't think things on the GPU front are gonna pop off anytime soon. Uh, early next year, we have the Nvidia Super Series, which I can't say I'm super excited for, but maybe there will be a surprise there. We'll have to wait and see. We could really only hope at this point. So it might not be until later next year that things really do spice up. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. Hopefully if you need a new GPU, one of these options will get you up and gaming and maybe you'll be lucky enough to land one in time for Christmas. Actually, not sure when this video will be going out, but Merry Christmas anyway, and have a happy new year. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.